What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, just finished watching Money in the Bank, and uh, I kind of have some mixed feelings there. Shout out to everyone that was a part of the live stream on the In the Clutch page. We really appreciate everyone that joined in for the live stream. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm, I have mixed feelings about this pay per view. There were some high moments, and then there were some low moments. And uh, there were some boring moments. We're going to get into all of that. I just feel like the build-up to Money in the Bank this year was lackluster. It wasn't, it wasn't really thought out or planned out. Like, some of these matches, like the build-ups to these matches, they were just kind of thrown together. And I feel like this pay-per-view felt thrown together for the most part. But there were still some enjoyable things on the show. Got a few things to talk about. So, let's get right into it. And they started off the show with the very first match, the women's uh, Money in the Bank ladder match. To be honest with you, this match was not that good. It was a, it, it, it was sloppy. There was a lot of sloppiness. There was a few botches here and there within the ring, outside the ring. Uh, but I will say this, the crowd was hyped. The crowd was very hyped for this match. So one thing I can say the Las Vegas crowd, they showed up, they gave energy to this show, because trust me, when I say this, personally watching this at home, it just it just was not hidden for me, it was not hidden for me at all, just because of the sloppiness that was in the ring, not the entire match was it like miscommunication and botches everywhere, but there were noticeable botches throughout the match, now I want to talk about this specific spot, between Oscar and uh, Becky Lynch, Oscar's laid out. They have the the uh, the ladder on the announce table and the ring apron, so she's laid out on there. Becky Lynch gets another ladder. I'm thinking, oh, Barrow, it's they they're going they're going hardcore with it. Becky Lynch kind of goes to the top, not to the very top, but like almost at the top. She climbs up and she goes to uh, you know to dive off like a little sit down dive onto to Oscar. But I think she kind of overshot it. So she didn't really fall all the way on there. I don't know if they were hoping that the ladder would break. If that was the spot for the ladder to break. But it didn't happen. She kind of hit Oscar on the edge of the ladder. Bounced off her. But it, it looked like Oscar got the most of that. Because, bruh, that looked brutal for Oscar. Her taking that spot. But even then, that spot, it, it was cool. But I don't know. It, it just... For the setup, it didn't really hit for me. Crowd was loving it. Crowd thought it was crazy. But for me personally, and a lot of us that was watching at home in the chat, um, it just it just wasn't hitting. But that was a it's still a cool, noticeable spot. Ultimately, they give the win here to Liv Morgan. I was thinking Becky Lynch was going to get the win here. They kind of had set it up for her. But no, Liv Morgan won the money in the bank. She used Mrs. Money in the Bank for this year and we're going to talk about what Liv Morgan did later on uh in this uh in this video but I was very surprised that they went with her and I was okay with it I didn't have a problem with it at all I think a lot of people in the crowd was pro Liv Morgan and uh she got some you deserve a chance which I think Liv deserves some type of win you know in her current uh in her current WWE run she's been like getting close to the championship but not really succeeding so they finally threw a bone here and it was a cool good feel moment for her but the match personally still was not that good it was just sloppy a lot of uncoordinated things were happening inside and outside the ring it just just not was not feeling this money in the bank match but i was okay with the outcome so after that i want to say we had uh austin theory versus bobby lashley now the build-up for this match was awful they went from doing manly poses you know the bodybuilding poses to squirting baby oil on each other like it just got weird very quickly but fans are definitely pro bobby lashley he has a nice like baby face reaction and austin theory as a heel is doing some pretty great work as a heel people legit don't like him we're going to talk about him later on as well this match was good. This match was really, really good. They worked really well in the ring. This is probably one of Bobby Lashley's, Bobby Lashley's one of his better matches. 
this year. This was really, really good. It was back and forth. The story of pretty much Austin Theory doing whatever he can to keep the title even trying to cheat. And the crazy thing is Bobby Lashley ends up submitting him. Ends up submitting him. I, I thought it was a spot in the moment where Bobby Lashley gets hit with a spear. And I'm thinking, uh, and then uh, Austin Theory is trying to set up for his finisher. And I'm thinking the match is over. Oh, man, whoop. Austin Theory is about to get the win because previously, before he hit him with the spear, he kind of raked his eyes. But he was able to get out of it, put him in his submission hold, and Austin Theory tapped. And Bobby Lashley is your, you, your new United States champion. I was not prepared for that. I did not see that coming. I thought that was that was crazy. I really thought Austin Theory was going to retain. But once you know what happened later on at night, then you kind of figure out why this happened. But either way, this match was really good. I really wish the show would have started with this match. This match would have been a very good uh, way to start off the show. Um, but other than that, this was a good match. Good match. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed the flow. In my opinion, I think it's one of Bobby Lashley's best match so far this year. But it was definitely very good. And we will see what they do with him as the new United States champion. So, we go into um, arguably. Well, it's not even arguably. This was the best match of the night. And I really wasn't looking forward to seeing this match because I'm tired of seeing this match. But, they... Their chemistry in the ring is it's hard to not care. The Usos versus the Street Profits for the WWE Unified Tag Team Championships. I'm tired of seeing this match, but goddamn, this this match was great. This match was great. They stole the show, and part of me believe when they announced this match, they were gonna probably steal the show because these guys uh work really well together in the ring like these these four guys know each other very well um and they just put on a phenomenal match they they started to build it up and then they the pacing it started it was one move after another is it's all about the street profits trying to overcome the usos and their tag team greatness you know of course the usos good with the psychology of cutting off the ring talking trash trying to isolate each one of them this was great. This match was fun. There was some great near falls. Crowd was loving this. Crowd was chanting fight forever. And I understandably so. This was just fantastic. This is what you call tag team wrestling. I just wish they had more tag teams in WWE. This is easily, without a doubt, the best match of the night. It's better than the men's ladder match, in my opinion. This was the best match of the night. Go check this match out. If there's anything you check out from this pay-per-view, it should be that match. Of course, the Usos were going to retain. There was a couple close calls where you thought maybe they were going to win the Frog Splash for Montez Ford. I'm thinking, oh, this is it. Maybe they're going to pull off the upset. Nope, it didn't happen. But they are setting up a rematch. The Usos didn't win. But when you see the replay, the ref didn't see that Montez Ford shoulder was up he didn't see it at the angle he was counting the pin so that's how they're gonna set up another rematch they'll probably have a match at SummerSlam and you know what even though I'm tired of seeing them have matches I I would love to see uh, if they're gonna do it which most likely they're gonna do they'll probably have a match at a uh, SummerSlam and you know what match I would like to see at SummerSlam between these guys I I, I really hope they're getting away from the TLC pay-per-view. And they should have a TLC match for the titles, bro. At SummerSlam, if you're going to make SummerSlam the biggest show of the summer, you got to go big. They don't need to have a regular match. No more regular no more regular matches where the referee decides to pin. I would love to see a TLC match for the titles. Have the titles up above in a TLC match, bro. I would love to see that. Comment down below if y'all would if y'all would be interested in seeing a rematch for at SummerSlam, the Usos versus the Street Profits in a TLC match. That that would be fun. That would be so much fun. And then you can go from there. I think that would be fantastic. So 
they uh do plan on probably having a, a rematch as of some sort so hopefully they add that stipulation the tlc stipulations but fantastic match love this match this was great highlight of the show and the usos retain as i thought they would now the low point of the show the boring point of the show man this match was a chore to sit through ronda versus natalia did i even care about the few build up no i did not care I, the most interesting thing about their feud was the fact that natalia was in like pretty much i wouldn't say embarrassing but natalia was owning her on social media she was giving her the social media beats i saw some of the stuff she was saying on twitter ronda didn't really have no good comeback she was roasting her on twitter i love that this match i didn't care for i didn't i i uh, no amount of natalia pretending to dress up like ronda and all the trash talking on twitter it, i just could not care i couldn't care it doesn't help that I feel like Ronda's character is kind of stale when it comes to her on being on the microphone. It's just kind of stale for me. And I didn't care for this match at all. It was it was serviceable at best. It was it was serviceable. The crowd was pretty much dead for the majority of this match. They they were there, they were lively, but in a sense of just like just they knew the next match was the money uh, the men's money in the bank. And I think a lot of people were just waiting for that moment. Uh, they went with the story of Ronda's knee getting hurt, one of her knees getting hurt. So they played up into that fact or whatnot. But ultimately, Ronda ended up tapping out um, uh, Natalia. I, I really wanted this match to end because I just, it's hard to get invested in a match where, you know, it's like you know the outcome. You know the outcome. You're not really too, you don't really too much care about the, I guess you could say, the the champion as a face. Because she's cool, it's Ronda, but she doesn't have that charisma that you would want from her. You know what I'm saying? And Natalia has always been Natalia, but no one really takes her seriously either. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, ah, uh, I guess. But the real talk of the town is what happened after Natalia tapped. You hear, you hear uh, Liv Morgan's music hit. Now, Ronda's selling her injury or whatnot. Liv Morgan comes out there. She cashes in her money in the bank. I'm surprised because I'm thinking maybe they're going to wait a little bit. No, they're, they're, they're going with this. Full flesh. She cashed it in. It looked like um, Liv Morgan was potentially going to lose because Ronda had her like an ankle lock for the most of this. But she was able to get out of that. She kicked Ronda's bad leg. They were really selling the leg injury. And honestly, they just went with an easy roll-up pin for the one, two, three. And we have a new women's SmackDown champion. And uh, Liv Morgan was not expecting this at all. Wasn't. I was really kind of confused. It wasn't even a bad thing. It was like, okay, they, she won it tonight, and now she's the new champion. It seemed rushed, in my opinion, but, I mean, we can see where it goes. I I know for a fact she gets better reactions than Ronda because a lot of fans, you know, care about Liv Morgan, and I think she's probably a better face character-wise than Ronda because a lot of people wanted Liv Morgan to finally be a champion and they got it and the crowd popped big now what was really weird is how ronda was in the ring still had the title she gave the title to live gave her a hug and raised her hand i get it it was live morgan live Mo or morgan's moment so you didn't want to take away from it but it was just weird to see how someone just won a match a grueling match to only get cashed in on to lose the title to give the title to someone that just beat them Gave them a hug and raised their hand. Like, it just, it, it looks weird. You know what I'm saying? But I get it. It was Liv's moment, but I, I, it it probably would have been better just to see Ronda just kind of roll out the wing, ring. Like, most of the people that get cashed in on just kind of, like, roll out the ring or whatnot. I was thinking maybe, oh, maybe they're going to turn Ronda Hill, but no. They're probably saving that for another moment. I know some of you guys were saying 
Ron is probably going to leave for a bit. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I was very just, it just seemed weird how she just, all right, you're the new champ, man. I love you. See you later. Like, it just seemed very re weird and kind of rushed. So, but yeah, other than that, man, that, that was, uh, that was a, a, a very interesting cash in, very rushed, but Liv Morgan is now your new SmackDown Women's Champion, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. My only fear I have for Liv is when Bailey gets back, she can hang that title up. Or definitely when Charlotte gets back, she can hang that title up because she's not going to have it that long. I can tell y'all this now. They're not giving her a long title reign. It, she, I feel like she's going to be a transitional champion. She'll hold it for a little bit until either Sasha, not Sasha, either uh, either Bailey comes back, whenever Bailey comes back, or um, or or Charlotte Flair, or maybe they do something where they have Bailey go after Bianca. That's a possibility since they have history. I don't know. I just feel like if one of those two wrestlers come back anytime at any point and they go to SmackDown, yeah, Liv is dropping that title. I can just tell you that now. So. I hope she doesn't become a transitional champion, but I think they're just throwing the fans a bone for a little bit, and then she's going to probably drop the belt to one of them, possibly. So, we will see how things play out. I also forgot to talk about Bianca Belair versus uh, versus Carmella. That was... Um, it wasn't as boring as the match with Ronda and, and Natalya. That was boring for the sake of I just really didn't care about the build up or feud and it just I don't know it just it was like it was lackluster haven't really been feeling Ronda's title reign I'm more big I'm a bigger fan in Bianca and her title reign I would love to see her wrestle with uh Rhea uh, Rhea, uh Ripley hopefully Rhea you know comes back and you know, have a speedy recovery um but this Carmella thing was kind of thrown together too. It wasn't as boring, mainly because I like uh, Bianca's move set a lot more than Ronda's. Bianca's more lively, jumpy, like not jumpy, but like athletic in the sense of she's moving around the ring. And I don't know, it, I, I like her energy better than Ronda's when it comes to in ring work. I mean, we kind of knew how this match was going to end. And obviously, Bianca Belair wins. There was nothing really special about it. You know, Bianca got the win there. And then after, it was a post-match attack. Carmella. Carmella attacked Bianca Belair. And this is, actually, this was right after, uh, I want to say, Bobby Lashley and Austin Theory had their match. So, we already know, knew Liv Morgan had won at the time. So, People were, were kind of speculating, is Liv Morgan going to cash in on Bianca because Bianca was down, but she never did. And I think they were setting that up. They were teasing that moment of possibly. Now, it does look like they may be setting up another match with Bianca and Carmella because they were talking trash after she attacked her. But I hope they don't. I I don't. I don't want to see that. I don't. I don't want to see that match again because we already know. Carmella was not taking the title off her. So, the right person won there. It's just, that match wasn't as boring, but it, it, you kind of knew where it was going. It was, it was, oh, it was serviceable at best. I think they need to give an, uh, uh, Bianca a better opponent where she could possibly, where it could possibly be believable that she could lose to. So, now we get to the main event. The men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Everybody was out there, you know, crowd was pro Riddle, crowd was pro uh, Seth Rollins for sure. Um, they were, uh, Drew was getting some good reactions as well. Um, everybody's out there. Adam Pierce comes out there and he announces the surprise entrant. Some of y'all were saying Brock Lesnar. I, I just want y'all to understand that doesn't make a lick of sense. Y'all were sending me that this weekend. That's, that's dumb. That's dumb as hell. Why would Brock be in a match? When he has a, a title opportunity match guaranteed at SummerSlam. That doesn't even make any sense. But once again, it's the WWE, so who knows. But the surprise entrance was Austin fucking Theory. And people in the chat was like, what? I was like, what? And it, it just, 
it was so confusing because I'm like, wait a wait a wait a minute. So everybody in this match had to have qualifying match, like qualifying matches to get in here. So you telling me per storyline, this guy can lose the United States Championship and then get granted an opportunity in money in the bank. And I get it. That's Vince protege. But it was just so, it just came out of left field. I was like, uh, okay. Like that kind of screws over everybody. Like it literally screws over everybody. Well, what was the point of anyone having a qualifying match when that can happen? So they have the match. It, it was some cool spots. I've, I've seen better money in the banks in the past. It was enjoyable. It, it definitely was enjoyable. It had some nice, interesting spots. Of course, the big man spot. Everybody teaming up to take out Omos, throwing ladders on him, not working, throwing him through the table. That's that that seemed to do the trick. There was a lot of people laying on the ground a lot. If you paid attention to the match, there was a lot of people just taking naps out there at ringside, and none other more than Austin Theory. Towards the end of the match, Austin. Theory wasn't even a part of it. When Omos got back up and started attacking everybody and they started attacking him to throw him to the, through the table, I don't even think Austin Theory was a part of the guys that threw him through the table. I think he was just out the ring, laying somewhere, taking a goddamn cat nap. That's literally what was happening. So Austin Theory's taking a nap. They took care of Omos. Everybody else starts brawling. I want to say probably easily. No doubt about it. One of the best spots in the match. You got Rollins has a, a, a ladder in the ring. Um, Matt Riddle has a, a ladder in the ring as well. They're going back and forth. Crowd's going crazy because crowd was definitely behind Matt Riddle. Crowd was definitely behind Seth Rollins as well. They're brawling at the top of the ladders. Close. Trying to reach at, at the briefcase. Matt Riddle hits an RKO. From damn near the top of the ladder on Seth Rollins, it was brutal. He instantly sent Seth Rollins to the gulags. Throw up your exes for Seth Rollins. Because he sent him to the gulags just off that move alone. Sent them to the gulags, bro. I was like, oh, Seth is done for the rest of this match. That was brutal. That RKO from down near the top of the ladder was the best spot. Had the crowd going crazy. Crowd was chanting. Holy, you know what? That was cool. That was very, very cool. He starts to climb back up the ladder. Crowd's going insane at this point. Pro Matt Riddle. All of a sudden, and I knew I caught it because you didn't see the Austin Theory for about 10 to 15 minutes towards the end of this match. You did not see him, which means he was taking a power nap. He woke up from his power nap, did a couple of stretches, got him something to drink, Wiped off his face, was ready to go, climbed up the ladder, started brawling with Matt Riddle, pushes him off. Once Matt Riddle fell, I was like, oh, they're doing this. And Matt, uh, Austin Theory wins <laughs> the money in the bank. Crowd booing, obviously. People in the chat while we was live, I've never seen so much negativity. The chat was just completely like, what the actual fuck was this? And to be honest with you, I am kind of indifferent to Austin Theory winning. Because I have been a big uh, proponent of building new stars. Austin Theory is starting to grow on me more and more. I like his character. I like his cocky attitude. He's a cocky piece of shit heel that, you know, is in cahoots with the boss and i hope they play this up they need to play this storyline that he was able to get permission from vince mcmahon as vince mcmahon's chosen guy to win money in the bank they need to play that up because he literally just came out there and stole the opportunity from somebody else and now he's mr money in the bank so i'm indifferent i don't I'm not mad that he won it, but I do think it's maybe a little bit too soon. And the only reason why I say that is because I think the better story to tell would have been Matt Riddle. I know some people are saying, well, he Matt Riddle already lost and he, he wasn't going to be able to challenge Roman because that was the stipulation 
I think they would have nullified that stipulation if you win money in the bank. It's like, you want money in the bank, you can cash it. No matter about that rule. I think it just would have been a better story. Or you could have went the Seth Rollins route. Granted, we would have seen that already. So, but I think people have liked Seth Rollins' work the past year and a half on Raw. He has been carrying Raw, Monday Night Raw. So, I don't think people would trip. I think people just want the title back on Monday Night Raw. At least a title back on Monday Night Raw, a head championship. So, I think they would have been okay with that. But honestly, I don't know. I don't know how they do this. Because... Austin Theory is a heel. Roman Reigns is still a heel. So the only way this actually makes sense is if Roman Reigns loses the title legitimately clean to someone and that's a baby face and then they end up losing the title to Austin Theory when he cashes in. I don't know. Because I just... I'm trying to picture in my mind Austin Theory cashing in on a vulnerable Roman Reigns. I don't know. The only reason why I say it it could work because that would be the way to turn Roman face because Roman would kind of be maybe a sympathetic character. Maybe, but then again, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just don't think it's... Austin Theory's time yet but we will see how they play this out but me I, I think the better option and I think a lot of us would have wanted Matt Riddle to be the guy to win it all so I don't know I'm, I'm kind of indifferent I really have to see how things play out but I've been seeing a lot of <laughs> a lot of people saying this was awful on I've seen it on Twitter I've seen it definitely in our chat YouTube chat y'all were not feeling this so I don't know but ultimately, this is how I feel about the pay-per-view. It's, it's giving me an IDK feeling. Outside of the men's, uh, the, that tag team t uh, match for the uh, uni uh, unified tag team titles, outside of that, every other match on this show was either ending the, uh, the uh, Bobby Lashley and Austin Theory match. Those are the two best matches on the show. Everything else is mid to boring. Nothing's god awful, like just trash, but it's more so I'm not gonna remember none of these matches outside of the tag team match and maybe the United States Championship match, because that was pretty good. And I'll remember the men's uh money in the bank ending because Austin Theory out of nowhere won it. So um and I'll probably also remember Liv Morgan. And winning and then cashing in on Ronda. So there are some memorable moments, but the matches itself, outside of like maybe three, the matches itself, not all of them were just memorable like that. So I don't know. If I had to rate this pay-per-view on a scale of one to ten, I'm gonna give this a cool six and a half. I'm gonna give this a cool six and a half. It, it was enjoyable at moments, and then it was boring at moments. And it, it more or less, it kind of left me like, like, I like what they decided to do, but it, I feel like the decisions that was made were just kind of rushed. So I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one feeling that way. It just feel like certain things that was made tonight were kind of rushed, but who knows? So this is where I leave it to you guys. Let me know in the comment section down below. Did you guys enjoy this year's Money in the Bank? Are you guys happy that Liv Morgan is now the SmackDown Women's Champion? Are you guys happy that Austin Theory is now the new Mr. Money in the Bank? And did you guys enjoy this show? What was your favorite match? What was your least favorite match? And, uh, you know, give me a, a rating on a scale of 1 to 10. What do you rate Money in the Bank? this year man but hey overall what makes these pay-per-view events so much better is when we're able to live stream it with you guys and just have a good time so i'm gonna just leave it out on that but i appreciate all love and support on the channel man road to 90k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace